Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiria, a teaching ministry that teaches the Word of God verse by verse to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning to you and welcome to Simple Truth Gospel. Today, we will finish the book of Romans. We've been on this book for about uh, three months now, I believe. So if you missed any of our previous study, you can always go to our website, kuim.org, or you can go to our SoundCloud or YouTube channel, which is Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. And all our materials are online and you can download them free of charge. But before we continue today, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity for your children to gather today to glean from your word. Father, I pray that you will help us behold glorious and wondrous things from your word today. We desire to know more and more of your word because the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. Father, I pray that you will teach us today by your Holy Spirit. Minister to us simultaneously. Your word said that uh, the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. He will lead us into all the truth. He will show us the things that are yet to come. He will bring to our memories things spoken to us in the word of God. So we, we believe that we will receive revelation, knowledge, and understanding today by the power of your Holy Spirit. As always, we propose to be doers, not hearers only. For I pray that we will not sow discord among the brethren. Help us to be the one that will cause multiplication instead of division in the church. For you are not in the business of division. There are so many things you've done for us. They are innumerable if we count them. But we say we appreciate. Thank you, Father. And we give all the glory, honor, power, majesty to your holy name forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, everybody said, Amen. Oh, my good friends. Like I said, we are going to finish the book of Romans today. And um, next week, we will be starting the book of the Hebrews. <laughs> so get ready. I would like you to read uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 1 uh, ahead of time. So let's go ahead and uh, start in verse 1. I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in St. Kyrie, that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and assist her in whatever business she has need of, for indeed she has been a helper of many and of myself also. <clears throat> so this is the section of names. So there are so many names mentioned here. So forgive me ahead of time <laughs> if I mispronounce any of them. So you, you will say, I know how to say that name. That's not how to say it. <laughs> so I apologize ahead of time. I'll try my best. <laughs> but if I saw if I don't say it accurately, like you want it to be said, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> so here we have um, uh, about uh, 26 named individuals and two unnamed individuals. So you can see that Paul uh, 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 had a team with him always. And we believe that his team contributed to his success in the ministry. We also notice that uh, Paul um, doesn't see women as subservient. As some people will say, 
Out of all the names here, about nine of them are women. And Paul started these names with Phoebe, a lady. A lady that uh, Paul trusted so much that uh, he gave her this letter to be delivered to the saints at Rome. And he also told the saints at home, the lady that I was bringing this letter to you, I trust her so much. Please receive her graciously. You see, we need um, <clears throat> each other. You see, the more we need each other and the more we work in groups, the more we are able to reach even many people, many more. So find out what God has called you to do. That is something God called you to do. And then find out which team you belong to. When you find out these things, it will make the work easier. We will be able to work longer and we will be able to accomplish even more. So don't be a man alone or a woman alone. You can't do it all alone by yourself. Remember Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. It says, two are better than one, for they have a better reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will be able to lift up his uh, companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Are you a pastor? Are you a teacher? Are you in the ministry? My advice to you is you can't do it alone. You see, when God calls you to do the work, he also called other people who's going to do the work with you. So do not reject the help of other people. You don't want to be that one that is uh, shining alone. You want to be seen alone, you know. There are some pastors who will not even let another pastor come and preach on the pulpit. Because they want to be the, that light that everybody sees. And by doing so, they weary themselves. And not only that, they are tired, but they are not able to accomplish more. So, we are the body of Christ. You see, individual members, but collectively we make up one body of Christ. So, if we work together, we will be able to achieve even more. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 3, Greet Priscilla and Aquilia, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Who risk their own necks for my life? To whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles likewise greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved Epanetus, who is the first fruit of Ikea to Christ. So some of these names that Paul uh, uh, will list on this chapter today uh, we are familiar with some of the names, and uh, some of them we don't know. <laughs> so here he talks about uh, 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 Priscilla and Aquila. And uh, you remember they originally came from Rome. They were the people, or part of the people that uh, Emperor uh, Claudius expelled from Rome, Italy. So they came to Corinth. So they met Paul at Corinth. And we know that they were tent makers. And Paul also was a tent maker. So they had a good company with each other. They also followed Paul to Ephesus. Now, remember, the, uh, you remember Apollos, okay, from Alexandria, Egypt. An eloquent speaker, one who could teach the word of God, only that uh, his knowledge was limited to uh, the baptism of John, uh, John the Baptist. And uh, he didn't know that Jesus Christ already came. So when he was at Ephesus teaching the people, uh, Priscilla and Aquila, they observed that this man uh, is used by God. 
But the problem is this. He is limited in his knowledge. So they called him aside and they instructed him more in the ways of the Lord. So they told him, hey, Jesus Christ already came <laughs> and died. Salvation is here now. He is now in heaven. <laughs> so obviously they went back to Rome and started a church in their house. So now Paul is uh, recognizing them and uh, sending his salutation to them. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 6. Great Mary, who labored much for us, great Androsi, Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners, who are of no, not among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me, greater Amplias, my beloved in the Lord, greater Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and uh, Stachys, my beloved. Greet Apelles, approved in Christ. Greet those who are the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herod Herodion, my countrymen. Greet those who are the household of uh, Narcissus, who are in the Lord. So here it is believed that um, uh, Stachys, is of the household of uh, Caesar. And we also believe that Aristobulus mentioned here is the grandson of uh, Herod the Agrippa I. You know him, the one that killed James and wanted to lay hold of Peter uh, to kill him, but uh, he, Paul, Peter was saved from his hands. And he is also the grandson, this... Uh, um, Herod Agrippa I is the grandson of Herod the Great. You know Herod the Great, the one that killed the little children in Israel. So um, in verse 16, in verse um, 12, it says, Greater Tithenia and uh, Tryphoser, who have labored in the Lord, greet the beloved of Persis, who labor much in the Lord? Great Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Great uh, Asyncritus, Felgon, Hermas, Patrobas, Hermas, and the brethren who are with them, Great uh, Philologos and Julia, Neros and his sister, and uh, Olympus and all the saints who are with them greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. So here we see uh, uh, names again. So Paul uh, 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 recognizes uh, all these individuals who helped him uh, in his ministry. We continue in verse 17. Now I urge you, brethren, not those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord, Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. So Paul here now is sounding a warning to everyone about those who sow discord inside the church. Remember Proverbs chapter 6. He says there are six things the Lord hates. Yea, seven are abomination unto him. And one of the things that it listed is... Uh, the one who sowed discord among brethren. So inside the church, there are people who divide the church directly or indirectly. Some of them are agents of Satan without even knowing it. 
You know how Satan divided the church, wanted his uh, modus operandi in the past was to divide the church or stop the progress of the church through outside persecution. But he found out that this, this, uh, this didn't work. For example, in Jerusalem, when Christians were persecuted, they scattered abroad all over the place. Wherever they went, <laughs> they spread the gospel even further. So it did not work. Rather, Christianity grew. Another example is in China. When uh, there was a, a, a great persecution. Uh, uh, the church went on the ground as a result of communism. But instead of the church extinguishing, even grew, became stronger, and even reached more people. So Satan knows that this doesn't work. Now what does he do? He tries to divide the church from within. And he does it through so many ways. One of the ways is uh, he will use pastors, those who call themselves pastors, teachers, ministers. And he will inspire them to teach heresies. Things that are contrary to the word of God. Another way he will do it is to uh, 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 go through the church members, individuals. And these individuals will use uh, gossips, innuendos, insinuations, flattering speeches and words to divide the church of Christ. So, Paul tells us how to deal with these people. He gives us a very good advice on how to handle the people that will divide the church of Christ. So, solution number one, for those ones that will teach heresies, the heretics, how to deal with them is for you to know the word of God yourself. Because you know that when you have the word of God in you, you will be able to fish out heresies when they are preached by the heretics. So you know the entrance of his word will give you light and gives understanding to the simple. So you study to show yourself approved so that when you hear the heresies, what are you going to do? Ignore, ignore, ignore. And then you do what the word of God says. That is one way. Now, how to deal with the people who sow uh, discord among brethren is to refer them. So someone comes to you and they uh, start the gossip in windows, insinuations, flattering words, indirect speeches. So you're going to say, I I I'm sorry, uh, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so. Have you spoken to the person who is involved in this? Have you had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them? For I think it would be uh, 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 splendid if you would have this conversation with them directly. You see what I mean? And they will disappear. They will never bring any of such things to you again. Do not give them voice. Do not give them f uh, a fuel for their fires. No, don't. And if you're the one that they are talking about, do not talk back. <laughs> do not talk back. You know, don't go try to you know, uh, defend yourself or, or argue with them or confront them. Because these people, they want to have a voice. They want to have a platform. And it upsets them the most if you ignore them, if you don't say anything back to them. It's, it's, it just quenches something inside them. Because now they're not going to be hard. So that's the way to treat them. That's the way to deal with situations like this. Now, 
He tells us here as well the reason why they are doing it. These dividers. Why? Because of their self-glory. They want to be heard. They want to have a position. They want to have a voice. They don't care about you. It's not all about you, no. Whatever they bring into you and telling you is not uh, for your own benefit. No, it's for their own bellies. It's for their own good. For their own uh, uh, favor. For their own glory. So you don't become a partaker of what they're trying to achieve. You don't help them achieve what they plan to achieve. It is not of God. That's what Paul says here. What they're doing is not of God. We are now in verse, um, I believe, verse 19. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will cross settle under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Paul continues to give his advice. He says, don't be a partaker of those that Satan is using to divide the church, to sow discord among brethren. Rather, he wants us to be doers of the word of God. As we find out what the word of God says, we don't partake in gossips, we don't partake in lying, we don't partake in evil things. We become doers of that. So, he wants us also to be faithful. There are so many distractions in the world today. Some of them are coming to us from our job, businesses, society, even families, members. So, the, the, the main purpose of all these distractions is to uh, um, uh, make you lose focus in the things that pertains to God. When you begin to encounter these uh, distractions, because I know you will, if you live in this world, you will. The Bible gives us a very important advice on what to do. He tells us to lay aside every weight and every sin that does easily beseech us and run our race with patience, looking up to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Do not give time to these distractions, for there are so many voices in the world and none without a signification. So we don't give, we don't pay attention to these distractions. Rather, we focus. We focus because we know that we are in a race. Are you hearing me, my good friends? Those who run in a race, they all run. But only one obtains the gold medal. Run with that intention that you want to be the one that obtains that gold medal. That's what the word of God says to us. So now, what do you do? When they bring to you these innuendos and these uh, flattering speeches and uh, uh, these uh, gossips that divide the church, what are you going to say? <laughs> no, I'm not going to be a partaker. I'm running a race and I'm going for the gold medal. When they want you to steal from the government, to steal from the place where you work, from other people's businesses. What are you going to do? No, I'm not going to be a partaker. I am running in a race and I want to obtain the gold medal. When the enemy puts in your mind the idea or, or, or the intention to divorce your spouse or cheat on your spouse, what are you going to do? No. I'm not going to be a partaker. I'm running in a race. And my goal is to obtain the gold medal. Have always this consciousness in you that the time is very short. 
You don't want to be distracted. The time is very short. And very soon, Satan will be under your feet permanently. Do you know when this is going to happen? It will happen someday. When he will permanently be under your feet. Remember the Bible tells us about uh, one angel. <laughs> Just one angel. We lay hold of him and we'll cast him into the abuso, the bottomless pit. And when he's released shortly, he will all now go straight to Gehenna, the outer darkness. That's where he's going to spend eternity. So there is a day coming when he's going to be cast under your feet forever. So with this in your mind, you're going to run your race. And no, the time is very short. And you don't want to be distracted. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Baruch Hashem Hadonai. We are now in verse 21. Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, my countrymen, greet you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle to greet you in the Lord. So, you know, Timothy, one of Paul's uh, prodigy, uh, and the one he mentored in Christ, and uh, he wrote letters to him, uh, uh, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy. This one we know. And now, there is this guy here that says, his name is uh, Tertius. He says, I'm the one who wrote this letter. Uh, Someone will say, confusion. <laughs> I thought Paul wrote this letter. Why is this guy claiming he wrote this letter? <laughs> Very simple. Now, Tertius is the emanuensis that Paul used to pen this letter. Paul often dictated his letters. He would dictate and someone would write. And towards the end of it, Paul will sign the letter, uh, authenticating it. So that's what is going on here. In verse uh, 23, Gaius, my host and the host of the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, greets you. And uh, Quartus, a brother, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So you see here, you notice that Paul, he wants to end this letter. But he doesn't want to end this letter. He says a man twice already, but he, the man keeps talking. <laughs> so what is going on? <laughs> this is, uh, you know, do not be mad at your pastors <laughs> or your teachers. You know, when they, when they say I'm closing, they say in closing, and then they keep talking for another 20 minutes. <laughs> Paul did the same thing here. So uh, don't be offended when they do it. To some people, when they say in closing, what they, what they mean is this. I am getting ready to start to begin to close. <laughs> and it will, it will take another 20 minutes, 30 minutes <laughs> for them to finally close. So we know where it's coming from. You have patience now with your with those that teach you the word of God. We are now in verse 25. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest. And by the prophetic scriptures made known to all the nations, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, for obedience to the faith, to God alone, wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So now, finally, Paul says, Amen. And this time around, he meant what he said. <laughs> so, Paul, out of overflowing joy from within, busted into doxology. 
he busted into praise and the glorification of God. That's what doxology means. So now he tells us the reason why he's praising God and glorifying God. First of all, he says, God that I serve is able to strengthen you based on what his word says. In other words, he will watch over his word to perform it. The second reason he says that God is able to comfort you and to strengthen you based on everything that I have written from Romans chapter 1 all the way to Romans chapter 16, which is also the word of God. And again, he says God is able to strengthen you based on the hidden secrets. And what is that hidden secret? What is that mystery? The mystery is this. Mystery always in the New Testament means something that was hidden from the Old Testament sense, but now is revealed to the New Testament sense. Now, what is that mystery? The mystery that now the door of salvation is widely open to both the Jews and the Gentiles. And anyone who will come to Jesus Christ of Nazareth will be accepted by God. That is the mystery. He says, God is able to strengthen you based on this information. You know that you can come in and other people can come in. So you tell them, hey, I'm in already, but I want you to come in regardless of your background. It doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or a Gentile. The door is right now open. Come on in. God is able to strengthen you. You remember our brother Jude who also wrote uh, uh, one of the epistles. And uh, it's only one uh, 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 chapter. So uh, if you go to uh, verse 24, all the way to verse 25. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless to the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Jude says a similar thing. God is able to keep you from falling. You know, my good friends, it is a very good thing that sometimes we get into doxology. We get into praise and, uh, and we glorify God, regardless of the circumstances around and us. You know, if you live in this world, they will come to you. So don't say, I am going to live on a flowery bed of roses. It does not exist. Not to the Christian and not to the unbeliever. It doesn't. But what do we do? Sometimes sit. Think about it. Meditate upon the goodness and the blessings of God in your life. Oh, think about how many things God has done for you. When he saved you. When he delivered you. When he healed you. When he provided for you. When he gave you peace. So many things that he, he's done and he's still doing and he will do. So when you, when you think about all these things, you lift up your hands and praise God and bless his holy name and thank him and say, God, I know, I know. You know me more than I know myself. Your thoughts towards me, they are perfect. Great is the number of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand in the sea. Oh, your goodness and your mercy, they endure forever. Oh, you love me so much that you gave me Jesus Christ. He is now, not only that he died for me, but he is making intercession for me at the right hand, your own right hand. Blessed be your holy name. You told me that things will come. Jesus told me that in the world that I will have tribulations. 
But he also told me that I should be of good cheer because he overcame the world for me. So, Father, I give you all the glory in the midst of my trials and tribulations because I understand that you've made me more than a conqueror in you. And all things now work together for my good. I bless your holy name forever and ever. My friends, when you get into doxology, you will see everything around you, those things that you think that are big, they begin to melt in your presence because who is, what, what can be compared to the power of the almighty God. For God says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? No. So you, you, you thank God for who he is. He is your father, heavenly father. And you have a relationship with him. We don't come to him only when we, we need something. No, we are in fellowship. We are in relationship. So we come all the time and we communicate with him and we get in touch with him all the time. We don't leave and then we come back. No, we abide in him all the time. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what Paul did here. Doxology. He went in there. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the more you know the word of God. That's what Paul is saying here. The more you know what the Bible says, the more you will find more reasons to be strengthened by the word of God. We know Paul as someone who fought the good fight of faith. And we remember him today because uh, he uh, 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 was faithful where the gospel of Jesus Christ is consigned. So, my good friends, what do you want to be remembered for when you are gone? Let me, in closing, let me leave you with this thought. A 19th century Swedish scientist was reading on a newspaper one day, and while he glanced through the obituary section, he found his name there reported as dead. In that place, he was described as a merchant of death, one who invented destruction. Now, this troubled him so much. He was bitter about it. He said to himself, is this how I'm going to be remembered after I am gone? As a result of this, he gave instruction in his will to start a foundation, a foundation that will honor people who will do things that will benefit the society. That man is Alfred Nobel, the man who invented uh, dynamite, the one who started the uh, Nobel Peace Prize Award to recognize those who through their contributions benefited their society from all walks of life. What do you want to be remembered today when you are gone? Do you want to be remembered as someone uh, uh, who built mansions, started businesses, left a lot of money in your account, do you want to be remembered as someone who through your innovations, ideas, concepts, philosophies, technologies, music, movies, ruin the life of so many people even after you are gone? Or do you want to be remembered as someone who turned many to righteousness, who advanced the kingdom of God, who through your contributions to the society, many are favored? Even after you are gone. Now, life is very short. And Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. Whatever you're going to do for the kingdom of God, do it now. Do not procrastinate any longer. You see, everything that you see now and you possess will someday pass away. Yes, they will. So, live your life every day as though it were your last. Because someday it's going to be your last. Be wise. 
and turn many to righteousness. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My good friends, I have come to the end of today's teaching. If you are not yet born again, or you wandered away from Jesus Christ, now is another opportunity for you to come into the kingdom of God or to come back to Christ. Jesus Christ made it very clear in his own words. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Peter, in his writing in Acts of the Apostles, said, No other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, speaking to Nicodemus, said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So now, the only way for you to see the kingdom of God is through, you must be born again. You must be born again. So now, what does it mean to be born again? A question that so many people ask, and so many people don't know. To be born again means that uh, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You believe that he is the Son of God. He died for your sins, and God raised him up from there from the dead on the third day. So you begin a personal relationship with him. Now, this personal relationship is not dependent upon your good merits, your efforts, your, 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 your self-righteousness. No, you come to Jesus Christ as you are. And he will recreate your spirit by the power of his Holy Spirit. And now you will have the ability to do good things. That's what it means to be born again. And uh, unfortunately, there are so many religions in the world. They are trying to get to heaven by their good works. The Bible tells us that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the presence of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No one righteous, not even a single one. But a way has been opened for us to come, to approach God, to come into heaven. And that way is through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If your religion is teaching you that you can access God or have access to heaven without going through Jesus Christ, they are misleading you. So you are hearing the truth right now. The only way to have access into the kingdom of God is you have to go through Jesus Christ. And it has to be a personal decision. You cannot be forced to do it. Jesus says, I knock at the door. And anyone who hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person. You have to be the one who's going to make the decision to come to Christ. And he says, anyone that comes to me, I will in no wise cast away. Which means, he is happy when you come. He wants you to come. But he's not going to force you to come because God created you and I as free mortal agents. We have, our, we have our own wills and our own choices to make. And God will not interfere with any of that. My good friends, the day you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Don't procrastinate any longer. Just today, about 150,000 people died in the world. And some of them were procrastinating. Now it's too late. So, where do you want to spend your eternity? Do you want to spend it in heaven? If it's in heaven, then there's only one way, through Jesus Christ. There is a place called hell. We are those who reject Jesus Christ while they were here on earth, will spend eternity, a place of torture and torment, a place where they will burn with fire and brimstone forever. You don't want to go in that direction. But there is an opportunity today, if you are hearing my voice, it's not too late. You can change the course, your course of life, right now. So I'm going to lead you in a very short prayer. If you pray this prayer and you mean it with all your heart, right now you're going to be born again. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. You raised him up from the dead on the third day. 
Oh, dear Lord Jesus, I ask you this day, come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. I believe now I am born again. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I turn away from my sin. Father, I give you all the glory for the precious gift of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your holy name, in Jesus' name. Amen. My good friends, if you pray that prayer, I welcome you into the kingdom of God. You are now a child of God and a Christian. If you would die now, you will spend eternity in heaven with Father God and Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Find a good church where they teach the word of God and become a member of that church so that you can be taught in the word of God. This is the only way you can grow spiritually. You can grow in your faith through the word of God. Peter says, desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. I want to use this opportunity to thank our partners all over the world. Those that are helping us through their prayers, through their financial support, through their uh, uh, services. Spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and reach the unrich. Telling the word of God to the untold. If you want to become a partner with this ministry, please go to our website. It is kuim.org. Remember, it is only those who hear the gospel and they do what the gospel says. They are the ones who will get the benefits of the gospel. So I urge you to be a doer of the word of God. My friends, I pray for you today. May the Lord bless you and be with you always. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in the midst of your trials and uh, tribulations and situations. May he open doors of opportunities for you, give you favor, help you to get out of debt. May he provide for you. May he heal your bodies if you are sick today. I pray that he will set your feet upon that rock that is higher than you are today. I pray that my God will give you wisdom, wisdom to make the right decisions all the time so that you do not make unnecessary mistakes. I pray also that he will bless the rest of your week. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Oh, my good friends, regardless of the challenges you face, Regardless of what the enemy is saying to you, directly or indirectly. <laughs> Always smile and be courageous. Jesus Christ did it all for you. And know that surely there is an end. And your own expectations will never be cut off. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Baruch Hashem. Adonai. Eskalabosu. Solodo. Enden anafradeske yarapaje kungo to braete. And in a major cala la bradeste, interna mosco ba ele fradoste, a guru gozo cubro gudo badi paroco solo cubatia, anglandam scu bradot, ne procustu, varacaste, plecete, silacuste, in the last day. And in a major de predestin. Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiria, a teaching ministry that teaches the word of God verse by verse. To help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.